Castlevania as a whole has a rather interesting history, and nowadays it's very neat to look back and see how the games developed from challenging 2D side-scrollers to the exploration and upgrade-based games they are today. While I do enjoy the classic Castlevania games, I believe that Symphony of the Night turned the series in the right direction to create a truly wonderful experience, and today, that's what we're going to be discussing. So, before Symphony of the Night, I honestly knew nothing about Castlevania. I knew it was a game, and uh, they have people in Smash Bros, so they must be popular, right? Anyways, the only reason I actually decided to play this game was because of the Netflix Castlevania show, which is actually a pretty phenomenal show, especially for a game adaptation, although season 3 had some weird stuff. Moving on, since I enjoyed the show so much, I decided to give it a go and first off discovered that according to every Castlevania games ranked list in existence, Symphony of the Night is the best, no competition. So I bought the Castlevania Requiem bundle that included both Symphony of the Night and Rondo of Blood. Rondo of Blood was more of a bonus as I was more intending to play Symphony of the Night. Yet, I actually played Rondo of Blood first because going in the story order in the game, it actually comes directly before Symphony of the Night. So my thoughts on Rondo of Blood? Um, well, difficult. Very difficult. Enemies are unpredictable and honestly kind of unfair. Bosses are super challenging, at least when you run out of lives you don't restart the entire game though. Really all this game did was cement the thought that I bought this game for Symphony of the Night. But one positive is that the final battle of Rondo of Blood is actually the start of Symphony of the Night, which is actually really cool. And one more negative thing is that in order to get the Platinum Trophy, you have to complete both games, which caused me to pretty much instantly give up on it. Okay, okay. Anyways, now that I'm done with that, let's actually talk about Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Overall, this game was pretty amazing. Being older, it still has some flaws to not make it quite perfect, like a major lack of direction or really any instruction on how to do, well, anything, but for the most part, that didn't matter. This game was phenomenal in so many other aspects, but before that, the last negative things. The story and voice acting are interesting. The voice acting in Castlevania has been known to be pretty ironically bad, and I see what they mean. Still, I liked Alucard as a character, but maybe that's just because of the show. I didn't really follow the story or cutscenes, but I got the gist of it and understood who I was fighting and whatnot. There are actually a couple multiple endings, which was a nice surprise. I got the bad ending on my first try, and I didn't even know actually, but I did feel like it just wasn't really happy or satisfying or anything. So then I found out about the other endings and discovered an entire other half of the game. But anyways, onto the good stuff. So you play as Alucard, son of Dracula and your mission is to take down who or whatever has taken over Dracula's castle. Along your way, you'll meet up with a few other allies and enemies that you may recognize from previous games. So, as I said, I liked Alucard and his epic long hair and cool design and stuff, but what really made him so cool was the absolutely gorgeous pixel animation. Everything from the way he sprints, uses a sword, dodges, does a spell, it's all just amazing. I loved it. Instead of going to 3D like many other games, Symphony of the Night stuck with pixelated graphics and it became one of my favorite looking classic pixelated games. Enemy and bosses are neatly designed and mostly a blast to fight, except for the harpies they can go die, but the rest was awesome. The castle is full of all sorts of unique areas and places that were always fun to explore and see how different each of them were. And to accompany this, was a really nice soundtrack, with some real bops in there. Each area, for the most part, has its own track, and all of them fit the areas and were great to listen to, although I do admit the inverted castle could have used a bit more variety. 
Oh yeah, so the inverted castle is pretty much the second half of the game, and is, well, exactly what it sounds like. The castle, but everything's flipped. Enemies are more difficult, and this was really the only time I had trouble with the game. Some enemies were just plain annoying, and others were devastating to get hit by. Anyways, if you couldn't tell already, this game is hugely based on exploration. Both castles are all full of sorts of things to find. Seriously, there are so many secrets to discover. Items, armor, weapons, consumables, life upgrades, special ability upgrades, new special abilities, literally so much stuff. If there is something slightly suspicious, chances are there's a secret there. Lots of special abilities allow you to progress in the story or do things in previous areas. So even if you don't know where you're going, returning to previously explored areas can prove very useful. These special abilities, called relics, play a very big role in the game. They provide you with all sorts of things, from familiar companions to cool transformations. The companions can help you do all sorts of things like defeat enemies, and the transformations can be essential for traversing, or even very helpful for combat. You can turn into a wolf or bat, both of which are fun, but the bat has always been more practical and at least my personal favorite. Both can be upgraded to do more things like move faster or learn to attack. Honestly, it was just a really nice feature. Transforming into them does use magic, but magic is in an abundance and auto-regenerates every time you save, so it's never really an inconvenience. Alright, so now into the next big section, the combat. The combat in this game is so smooth and satisfying, even though it's still very simple. Alucard has all sorts of swords, wands, and knives at his disposal to attack enemies with, each with their own advantages and disadvantages. Some of them work well on certain enemies or paired with other weapons, but Alucard also has tons of different consumables, items, armor, and even shields at his disposal. As I'm not one to use most consumables or items, well, I didn't use any, but customizing armor, shields, and weapons was a blast. And it was very awesome when I eventually got the best gear and watched my damage input increase. During combat, you can do all sorts of things, like block attacks with shields, press a button to quickly dodge backwards, or even input commands to cast spells, which never seemed especially practical, but maybe some people use them. Funny enough, the dodge backwards is actually the fastest way to move around, so they'll probably be spamming it a lot. Anyways, as I said earlier, the game is pretty easy, save for a few boss fights and some of the inverted castle. So yeah, to go with the combat is some pretty simple RPG mechanics, like XP, leveling up, and stat boosting armor and weapons, which I really liked. It wasn't too complex to be annoying to deal with, but it was still really satisfying and fun to do. Alright, so before we wrap things up, there's just a few last things I want to say. First off, I really love this game's sense of humor. Whether it's with the cleverly named trophies or things like being able to summon a cow, it was just really fun to do wacky things, and I feel like the developers had a very fun time putting all this stuff in. Oh yeah, and one awesome thing you can do is play the entire game as both Richter and Maria, which I haven't done, but trying them out was really fun, and I hope to attempt a full playthrough someday. So yeah, that is about it for this review. Even though it can be very confusing and difficult or unfair at times, Castlevania Symphony of the Night is still a true classic that changed both the Castlevania series and gaming as a whole forever, birthing the Metroidvania genre that so many games love to do today. I think I'll give this game an A-, although it might deserve an A for the impact it's made. Well, that's all for today. Thanks for watching everyone, and I hope to see you in another video. Thanks again. Bye.